阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥。陀佛。Today we're going to continue with the treaties and response and retributions for the part three crimes and offences, part six shamelessness. Last week, last last Monday, we talk about the um, why the title is called shamelessness and why、wow, and the first three、uh, sentences of of this.、Uh, Section. So today we're going to continue、uh, with、uh, completing this phrase because we will talk halfway、uh, last time.、Um, take credit for kindness shown by others while shirking responsibility for one's misconduct. To scapegoat an another or have others bear one's deserved punishment. The first half is being mentioned last time, and we're just going to do a simple revision on that. So the first half mentions about taking what is not yours in terms of fame, in terms of credits,、um, taking fame, taking credit that is not yours,、uh, comes out from somewhere, has to come out from somewhere. Why would a person be a fraud, right? Because if this is not your talent, not a result of your talent, not a result of your hard work, not the result of your genuine effort in whatever field you're on, or whatever field you were being famous. Off, then something's wrong. Why would a person do that?、Um, we have to think about how、um, we perceive, you know, this kind of,、um, you know, fame and and benefits and promotions and reputations.、Uh, people with、uh, full understanding of, you know, getting what you deserve and earning your fame, earning your.、Um, Recognition and stuff like that will not put themselves in that position where they stole people、uh, credit. The only time they would a person would be driven to do that is because they don't understand that you know one day it will come out, one day it will leak to the world that you are not what you say you are, and you are fraud. And if you being、uh, aware, fully aware of that,、um, then one would not will never ever. Go to that extent.、Um, so taking credits of other people、uh, for all the kind deeds or good deeds of other people is just、um, not. There's no benefit other than what seems to be a short-term praise or credit or promotion. But in the end, when you're being exposed, you will be exposed one way or the other. It's it's a fraud and everything will fall apart. So it's a waste of time. It's a waste of、um, it's a misplaced kind of effort. Uh, and if we understand that one deserves fame or deserves、um, some sort of a respect, reverence, because of what they genuinely did in their own line of work, in their own daily life, and they, they do that without thinking about trying to take recognitions, accolades, or、uh, praise and stuff, they're just genuinely doing that. Eventually, people will hear about them word of mouth, and eventually, it will be famous. It's a byproduct. It should not be an end. And if you put the hard work on something you do, then you, naturally you will gain it. So there's no room for this kind of behavior,、um, to be honest, unless、um, you know one was not aware of this kind of、um, thinking or teaching.、Um, this is a, in a sense, a selfishness in the most Extreme degree, and which ends up hurting oneself, you know, above anything else. Because that person who, you, whom you may stole the credit from, have still have the talent, still have the efforts, still have the right. They are genuinely trying to do good by whatever means. I mean, whatever community they serve or organization they serve, they will still have the fame, one way or the other. You can't take it off from them. The one you can take off. Is because people who hear it might not have the full information, might you know, lacking good judgment, might be themselves lacking wisdom, 
only fools will believe in that. A proper, well-informed person will at least reserve some sort of doubt and observe that person's action. And when you put to real test and you are not who they say, who you say you are, then it's a fraud. It will be exposed. So what is the whole point of all this exercise, right? So the point is to get what matters. Don't waste your time on chasing butterflies that is not uh, practical, that is not helping you to gain uh, any uh, advantage, real advantage in real life. Um, so what is the important place we need to put our effort, attention, our pursuit on? Our own conduct, our own speech, our own thought. This is our good old long talk that has been passing down generation to generations. It may sound boring, it may sound repetitive, it may sound like, oh my God, why is this again? But that's how you improve yourself. That's how you improve yourself, hence improving your quality of life, improving your relationships, improving everything else around you. If you improve yourself, you improve everything around you. That's how it works. And to improve yourself means you need to face responsibility. You need to face, um, not just take credit for your talent, but also take responsibility for your failures. Sometimes it might be very crippling in terms of financials, emotional relationships, etc., etc. Sometimes it's just being able to own up your mistakes, able to understand where it goes wrong, honestly, and able to recover from it. And there's no way to recover if you hide your uh, illness, because that illness will eat you from inside out. And illness I mentioned, you know, goes from physical all the way to actual character flaw, stuff like that. A flaw in your own personality, your conduct. Being aware of that, being an uh, uh, understanding of that, you know, understand that you can't immediately change it, but understand that you need to work on it. Understand that your action might not be uh, wholesome and you need to work on it. It's very powerful, right? It's not saying that one should be perfect. That is a goal. That is an ideal. No one can achieve it in one lifetime, right? Buddha takes many lifetimes to cultivate, to become perfect. It's not one lifetime. And we have so many, so many, so many to go. Even you become in pure land, you're only helped by the Buddha's 48 vows. You yourself needs work as well. It's just you being elevated temporarily by Amitabha because of his promise. And and we go there, we still need to fix ourselves. There's no other way around it. You can't be around the bush. It's just a better environment to fix yourself. Like a garage workshop versus a industrial level workshop. That's the only difference. Still need to fix yourself and still need to go down here and still need to go through all sorts of tribulations. Otherwise, how can you be a real deal? That means owning up mistakes. That means also recognize where your strength is. So those are balance. Recognize your strength, owning up your toxic nonsense or mistakes. Also understand your strength, use it properly, use it in the right place, use it at the right time. Despite your weakness is also important. So plus and minus. So that's what should be focused on. You know, what's your strength? What's your weakness? You know, what is your temptation that you are most vulnerable of? What is your most powerful, most shine, uh, brightest? What, what area where you shine the brightest, best? At the same time, can it be a double-edged sword that might also open up for, vulner uh, like, you know, making you uh, easily succumb to some sort of indulgence, some sort of habits? Those are very honest talk you ne we need to have to our with ourselves. We might have some help with good friends that are able to see through this see you through this journey. That's a journey everyone would take, no matter what form it is. Otherwise, there's no, uh, can't break through the shell. So that's the opposite of this attitude. Uh, take others' credit and push your responsibility to others. Second half is to scapegoat another or have other bears one deserve punishment. Pretty much the same kind of attitude. Uh, you know, people, putting people as your, um, in Chinese, is to bear the black walk. Bei hei guo. It's a very direct word. It's scapegoat, basically. You know, have someone taking all your mistakes and have you taking all the glories. Uh, I don't, I'm not going too much on that because it's the same. Um, yeah. Like, I can see why people would do that because they fear, you know, punishment or consequences they have. 
and that consequences will come whether you able to scapegoat other people or not. And in fact, you scapegoating other people will add more punishment to you. You're supposed to have that level of punishment and it becomes double because you push your punishment to others. Hence, you got interest. Interest arrear on your punishment. Basically, you double, triple, quadruple. So you can't run. You have to take it. And when you take it, sometimes it actually gets lighter as you as you experience it in the heaviness, the weight, the weightiness of life, the heaviness of life, the crappiness of what will happen to you. You will eventually subside. You'll get better and better and better. Only when you're able to be aware of the rules of the game. That's why we have this session. We are talking about the rules of the game called life. It is a game in a sense. Not that you shouldn't take it seriously. Not that you should, you know, uh, mess around, but it is a game. Playing a character getting through this level, another level, and, you know, fail the test, restart. Either when you're remaining lifeline in this life or next life. So it is a game in a sense. And if you fail the test again, try again, try again, try again. And that's the only way, you know, experience a little bit, a little bit. And Buddha is the person who fully understand the game and fully skillful at the game, have passed all levels, and then went back and helped those beginners like us. So punishment as well is part of a game. You need to take it because everything you do more or less will cause harm to yourself or others, to your thoughts, speech, and action. This the output of your action, of your existence. You know, when you exist, you have these three outputs. These three outputs inevitably will create good and bad actions. Good actions benefit people. Bad actions harm people. Simple, straightforward, right? Obviously, I'm simplifying it. It can be very complex. There are actions that might harm people in the outside, but actually benefit other people in the long run. Leo Fan has explored about that. I'm not going too deep on this. But the general idea is whatever you do will leave a trace behind. And that trace, whether it benefits or harm, will go back to you. you know, actions and reactions. And this will bounce back to you. And that's why we have the concept of punishment and rewards. It's not some sort of God from high above suddenly granted you this ability. It's you yourself have this have this mechanism inbuilt in every one of us, not just living beings, unliving beings. That's why the science says reaction and reaction. Energy can only be the transfer, cannot be destroyed. Those things are, you know, rules of the universe. Same goes for us. Us as a part of the universe, we need to bound by this rule. And hence cause and effect. It's just another way, another way of saying the law of whatever thermodynamics. Uh, so everyone has that. You know, whatever you do have traces. Whatever traces you left, you need to take it back. And the the, the job is to convert those reaction to be more beneficial towards you. That means you need to output more better energy, better actions. Better energy in terms of your speech, in terms of your thoughts, in terms of your actions. That's only three outputs you have as a human being, as a living being. You can have. And these three outputs, if you modify it to the best, highest degree, that means a lot of work, a lot of pain, a lot of self-reflection needs to be in there. And a lot of patience, a lot of, uh, you know, process. It's not that simple, but it is how it works if you want to get a better outcome. This life, next life. Believe it or not, doesn't matter. Gravity works regardless you believe it or not. It's just how it works. 365 days, the earth will not stop because you feel bad or feel happy. The earth will keep spinning because it is how it is. Same goes for law of karma. Don't care about your belief, your faith, your disbelief or your belief or whatever kind of mindset or whatever your brain is wired about. This is how it works. It will keep spinning. It will work like that. The wheel of karma will keep going. The only way you can do it is understand the game, recognize it, observe it, and able to play by the rules and able to go beyond the rules. And that beyond the rules, I can't teach you. You have to realize it. This is enlightenment stuff, right? So back to these, you have to understand the rule first and understand how, how we work around this. There's no other way other than sincerity. You know, your output, if it's a pure output, 
which is sincere thoughts, sincere mind, sincere thoughts, sincere actions, sincere speech, is genuine. If in business, people would like to be conduct business with you. In relationship, people would genuinely open up themselves to you, hence forming a genuine relationship. In your school career, in your, in your studies, you know, you genuinely want to contribute to this field. Obviously, you will get right, uh, you will get the sort of uh, findings that are true, not fraudulent. You'll find the colleagues, sometimes, uh, you know, you'll find the right person. You attract the right kind of person because you're actually looking for something genuine. Same thing. As Master Ying Guang has mentioned, one ounce of sincerity gets one ounce of benefit, real benefit. Ten ounces get ten ounces of benefit. One hundred tons of ben uh, one million tons of benefit, uh, uh, sincerity, genuineness. Uh, you get one hundred tons of benefit. And this is how all the gods and deities and Buddhas and Bodhisattvas granted you. You only can take so much that you can receive. All right, they okay, you only can receive so much help that you get able to take it. Right? If I'm a power lifter champion that can carry 100 kilogram, I want to help you to be able to achieve as well as I am in this field. I can't just suddenly throw 100 kg on you. You will die. You will start with 10. No, not even that. You will start with a pole. A pole that already weighed 25, 20 kgs. You need to start working yourself up to be able to receive the weight. I can teach you the best techniques. I can teach you how you avoid injuries. I can teach you the best time. I can tell you to you know eat better, eat this and that nutrition. I can tell you to have the routine. But to do it, to actually put the effort, sleep early, build up that sort of mentality that I want to be a power lifter and build up that sort of mentality of eating right things, eating stuff that is beneficial to your goal. It's up to you. I can't force that down to you. I can only teach you. You, can, you, you have to decide whether you want to follow through or not. Right? doesn't matter what culture, what era it is. Right? So, so back to here. So, yeah, I'm... I'm um, so all the best, Kampate. That's all I can say. Uh, let's move on. To buy or sell false titles and honors, on, and or to attain fame and win praise by fraud, to secretly harbor and entertain sadistic thoughts. Same thing. The output, the input. Remember, what you receive is what you gift. Um, false titles, honors, same. So you don't gain fame by doing nothing. Uh, if you do nothing and you still gain fame, it's because of your past action. There's a lot of um, uh, deposits that you have input in your karmic bank account that you can draw. Uh, that's it. You still have to put in the work. It's just you put a lot of work in the past, but you have not understand the full extent of your uh, life. Hence, you haven't fully understand the karma, how it works. And hence, you have, haven't attained full enlightenment. And you're still indulging yourself in this world. You're unable to gain full enlightenment. Hence, you're able to you you are not um, saved from negative output from yourself, right? That means you're still committing mistakes. You still make mistakes. That means you still have to suffer punishments and all the sort of consequences of your action. So this one is one of the such consequences coming out of ignorance. Buy, sell, false titles, honors, attain, and win phrase. I thought, Gu Mai Shu Yu. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I don't think I have to push that point any further. Um, yeah, Shi Zhi Ming Gui, you know, people with the fame, with people who can retain the fame is because they have real stuff that deserve to be, uh, deserve the name, you know, deserve the brand. They have real products, they have real potentials, they have real output that deserve the brand label on them. You know, this person equals to this products or this action. Uh, product is a result of action. You make something, you produce something. Um, and hence, this fame will attract titles, will attract reputations, will attract money, you know, will attract uh, power. 
because this person has actually output such level of um, product or results, you know, maybe affecting the organization, affecting the whole society, country, world, etc., etc. And hence, they, their name is, is respected, honored, revered. And that name is not, is, is a result of your action, of your speech, of your thought. And more genuine it is, the better the name is. So the name of Amitabha Buddha, what does it mean? In finite life, in the finite wisdom, it attracts all sorts of um, revelations and understanding and enlightenment in, and unfathomable benefits, the benefits that's beyond your comprehension. It's because this person, when he was uh, in the, in the, in the, in the, how do I say, when he was still practicing, haven't achieved anything, uh, haven't started, when he was, before he was Buddha, he's called Fa Zhang, Mr. Fa Zhang. He has made a lot of effort and effort that we cannot fathom in our short lifespan. He had put so much effort, so much observations, understanding, compassion, heart, tears, everything in it to make this product called Pure Land. And this Pure Land is a result of his five kalpas of work. And he's still giving the talks and giving the um, benefits to everyone who are able to reach there. Even those who haven't reached there, heard of his name, will be benefited by him. And that is why it's unfathomable, because he is beyond selfless. It's just, it's just one with everyone else. So when we hear the name, it invokes the same sort of um, strength in us to overcome this crap that we have made on our own. I'm not shying away from this word because I have a lot of crap on my own as well. And and how can you get through this when without a proper goal, proper role model? It's just hard. By yourself, it's already tough. Sometimes you can't even look at yourself. You know, self-love, self-hate, and hence unfortunate things like suicide happens. Unfortunate stuff because it's just too much. You know, we all have that level of um, reflection in that. It doesn't matter whether we ignore it or we aware of it. You're aware of it, good for you. That means you already put in a little bit of awareness. I'm not saying effort because putting effort is an entire different thing. You're committing to an entire new set of life away from your current one. And the current one that keeps outputting negative stuff or keeps outputting, creating this endless cycle of rebirth, right? Is what we need to get out of. But it is exactly the hardest thing to get out of. All, right? All this action that you've seen in these um, phrases is one of many. These are just simply summaries. They're not enough time in our lifespan to list out all the transgression we actually made. It will take beyond a human lifetime, many lifetimes. And the volume is un, is more than Sumeru. In Sumeru, in Buddhist term, you know, the volume of transgression we have made is beyond the volume, the, the height of Sumeru. Sumeru in Buddhist cosmology is not the mountain called Himalaya. That's because of the um, more naive understanding. Sumeru is in cosmo cosmic level. Think of it as a black hole, which is not true, which which I do not know. Okay, I have, don't have the ability. But what I can say is it's beyond bigger than black hole. That means it can it's it's a lot. It's vast. That means the level of our transgression is vast, endless. That means we are bound by this because we endlessly trying to we endlessly creating this. We keep creating this negative output. Obviously, we have positive stuff, right? But the negative outweighs it. Hence, we have a world that we are currently living in, in that sense. Not saying that it's, it's bad and we should give up. The problem is we need, if, if, if we understand what Buddha is trying to say in his sutra, you know, or the, you know, the Siddhikava Buddha, Bodhisattva, Tijang Pusa, talks about in his sutra, you know, we understand why disaster happens, why we have all this un... how to say... Um, things that happens not of our wishes, outside of our wishes. That's a, when a person actually observed history, observe daily life, things that go against your wishes are, tend to be more than things that goes with your wishes. That's, that's reality. You know, think of, I want more money. No, you have to work hard. I want to have a good uh, you know, working environment. Yes, you do have, if you have cultivated enough um, fortune. Maybe you are the 
a very few percentage of people who have this kind of good environment. Majority, if you actually observe in the entirety of the Earth, let's not talk about other cosmos. It's it's more likely it's, it's terrible, bad working conditions, etc. So to earn that major wages just to survive, they have to put in so much hard work, and 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 that's majority of the population. Right. Just because you are living in a very comfortable position, privileged position, doesn't mean the rest of them is. Right. That's how. That's what Buddha sees. But once you see that entire life will will change. Um, this is a gradual process. Right. So what I'm trying to say here is all these thoughts is because one cooped up in their own little um, minds. They haven't observed the world as it is. They haven't. How does it draw the right kind of conclusion? They say, oh, as long as I, you know, no one caught me, no one always able to use their authority to uh, suppress me, then I can just do whatever I want. I can, you know, buy the false titles, make myself appear to be chari- charitable person just because I want to get more honors, acolytes, or I can, you know, secretly harbor entertain sadistic thoughts. Just thoughts, right? No harm, no breaking the rules. But why is it bad? Because that's a negative output, you know. Thought eventually leads to actions, right? And those things have consequences about things that happen around us. The sort of output you get, the sort of imp- the sort of things you get encounter is the sort of output you give. You get what you give, all right? Reap what you sow. It, you can't have watermelons if you're just putting. Uh, major efforts. You can't have, you know, fruits if you don't even uh, bother to water it or even put the right seeds. If you don't even have the right seeds, how can you right, get the fruit that you want? You can't. It's it's very simple, but sometimes it just escapes us. Sometimes, you know, oh, I want to have this. I want to have that. Have we put in the effort? Have we understand the reality of it? Have we understand the weight, gravity of it? We understand it. Right, then we will naturally at peace because we are doing what we can in current circumstances towards that goal. Whether it achieved or not in your lifetime, it's none of our business. We can't. You can't. You can't say anything about that. You have no say about that. You can't because um, we are so. How to say? There's so many factors of changes. Sometimes, as a human beings, it's beyond human power. All right. What you can do is maybe bring out that intention, that thought. Put in some real effort yourself as a proof that you are committing towards this goal, and people see that you are quite genuine despite your flaws. You're able to power through this, or you still want to be in this game of achieving this goal. Say you want to build a company that produces good stuff; those are worldly desires. Or you want to go to PLN, you commit this, that, this, and that. Of course, you haven't done the real work yet. You're just doing the surface of it. But you are actually heading towards that place. You want to get there, and you haven't even you haven't started on yourself yet. You already have the intention. That's the baby step, pre first step, not even first step. But there's a step, something like that. And then you need to push yourself further with the right conditions. Someone else, you know, giving you these opportunities or some 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 place, some organization, open up the venue for you to continue pursuing this. And you grab it tight and grab it right, then you will eventually have the right condition to grow into the desire destination you want to achieve. That's how it works, right? So, so same worldly or otherworldly, world worldly desire or gaining enlightenment. Same same thing. You still need the right condition, but you need to have the right cost intention first. Um, so harbor entertain sadistic talk obviously is against it, right? Person with body heart will not touch that. It's against it. Why would someone have harbor entertain sadistic thoughts? Pleasure. Why would it gain pleasure? Perversion. What kind of perversion? Something against your understanding. Something against your conscience, right? Something that only tickles your five senses. That's perversion. Because that is... Five senses is a result of your true nature, of your of your essence, and that I don't know how to describe it. You can sort of say whatever name that is, God or Buddha, nature, stuff like that. Um, 
you know, it has been going through so much rendition, so much version, uh, so much twist and turn, and it has perverted into something different. It was still part of that source, but it has been, think of it as like a horoscope, 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 no horoscope. One Hua Tong, how do Kaleidoscope, kaleidoscope. Basically, you put in one piece of paper and then that thousands of mirrors will reflect it differently, hence creating a mosaic, mosaic patterns or flowers, you know, those patterns of uh, keep changing every single rotation you made. So kaleidoscope, right? Those kind of scope is basically reflecting our situation. You have one essence, that's it, nothing else. Everyone's essence is the same, same source, right? But it was being split into thousands of images. It still doesn't touch the source. The source is still there. It's still same thing, doesn't change. But it has been perverted into thousands, thousands of good and bad, all right? The one that is closer to the source still retain that original look, good and stuff like that. The one that has gone further and further away has perverted and perversed into something strange entirely. And this is one such issue, you know, Harbour entertains at these thoughts. So our job is just to go back from there, you know, don't entertain it. This thought sometimes might come, uh, might give rise because of our, um, like I say, a lot of, a lot of wandering thoughts coming out. Those are one of the wandering thoughts. You can't stop it, but you don't have to entertain it. You don't have to even, you don't have to give it a credit of existence. You know, just just ignore it, be indifferent to it. Focus on what is important. But that takes a lot of effort and strength. Um, and that needs a goal, that needs a vow. Hence, B B Buddha, when you teach, when you learn to a certain level, they want you to invoke a vow, vow puti sing, you know, invoke the body vow. Any, any sort of vow that reflects the spirit of body, path, is body vow. What is what is putti sing? So in Master Chinko mentioned is sincerity is the heart that wants to do good. The very basic requirement is the heart really wants to benefit, really wants to contribute, really wants to see other people's success. That's one of those virtues. Really wants to help these people better from physical to mental to spiritual level. Those kind of heart is body heart. It's the precursor to the body heart. All right. It's the catalyst to the body heart. It it has to start there. Start from being good, right? It has to start from there. Start from wanting to complete other people, your siblings, your friends, your enemies as well. Even, you know, they might be your enemy in in career or in battlefield. You also want to better them, you know, because of them you get better, and you want to give them sort of challenge so that they can get better. In the end of the day, everyone everyone becomes friend. So that's true kindness. Those kind of kindness goes beyond who am, me and you, right? It, it, it grows eventually outside of your family, outside of your friends. You also can do that towards your enemy, towards your rivals, towards your uh, strangers, you know, from your friends, family, which is easiest because they are part of your clan, part of your identity. They are born under the same family, under the same interest, under the same goal into a stranger who had you have nothing to do with, who they have nothing to do with you, into a enemy, rivals that always constantly disturbing you, trapping you. And that rival's enemy can be previously friends or family as well. See? Complex. It can be like, you know, sometimes, you know, maybe you, marriage doesn't work, it becomes rival, it becomes family, uh, enemy. And that also needs to change. You need to complete them. You know? And that means you need to be patient. You need to take it. You need to understand why you take it. You need to understand that it's painful. You can't take it anymore. You still need to take it. You cannot get enlightenment without going through this. You know, you have to be patient. Or those normal people can't be patient of. You have to be patient of those things that normal ordinary people that cannot be patient of. You have to do those things that normal ordinary people cannot achieve. Cannot fathom of doing it. You know. Like Master Ching Kong kneel down and let uh, his bully student slap him in the face. I was like, what? Why would I do that? I would punch back, right? 
that's what I would do. But Master Chi Kung doesn't. When he started to see he's going to be bullied or being punched, he immediately lie down on the floor and let the other side punch. However, it takes two to tango. He just that that, that bully student can't even do it because there's no reaction. So it's just one sided affair. Eventually he I don't know, ruffle a little bit, but he can't do it. It takes two to tango. There's nothing to go against the other palm to clap. So so eventually he becomes his friend rather than a uh, lawyer, uh, enemy or bully. So this is wisdom. And this is how body heart is uh, done, you know. So start all start from you know, do good by others, you know, despite what they do to you. Able to do that is the first step towards reconciliation with your um, anger and stuff like that. So because we all have all this random nonsense like sadistic thoughts in any form or you know random you know anger they are not random to be honest it's just it was in your mind somewhere con this mind space it just pops up so you, it's very hard i know but and i myself is struggling but you still need to you know understand that this is only part of the kaleidoscope you cannot stuck in that one little piece those things will pass, right? Longest is your lifespan. You die, that's it, it passed. It doesn't matter how much enemy you have or love you have or stuff like that. You die, it's gone. Of course, you will carry that emotions in your next existence. Energy can only be transferred, not destroyed. But as far as it concerns you as Dylan, you as Yanzi, you as whatever your name is given or taken or changed in this life, it's gone, right? So in that sense, it's meaningless. So what we have to do is we need to smooth out all these details by focusing what matters and then put all your energy on something that really can get you out of or better the next life, le next level, right? And you have to start from this, you have to start from getting closer to your true nature because that is the source of everything. Once you get to the source of everything, all sorts of good and bad does not it melts into one because it all came from one place. Ugly or happy, ugly or beauty, uh, you know, uh, strong or weak or uh, good and bad, they all came from here. So, but the first step is always wanting to help people, wanting to be completing other people, wanting to able to restrain yourself, able to take in what normal people won't take, still maintain compassion heart. And those will yield the purest result because your heart is getting purer, less of this complexities, right? Despite what outside happened, your heart remains pure because you know that's how you get back to your source. Once you get back to your source, nothing can stop you. You can be anything because you know the source. So you can be whatever, you can be good, bad, but not losing yourself in the process. And that's when you get into the real fun operating part where all the bodhisattvas are operating. They are free. They are not bound. They are skewed. It's like playing game. You get to the highest level, you can pass all the previous level easily. You can even find the errors. You can help other people to get their level up quickly because you're at the top. Right. At the top, it becomes most basic, most fundamental because there's only one piece, one piece of thing. There's no thousands of complexities. Something like that. You know, the, the, I sound like I know it, what I'm talking about, but to be honest, I'm not there. So I don't know. What I can say is it's like that. The higher you get, the simpler it gets. The less muddy mind you get, the more clearer it is. And when there's nothing happen, you don't think of anything. Right? Prashna Paramita, the, 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 the wisdom of the enlightened one. Not common wisdom, the wisdom of the enlightened one, prashna paramita, or the bodhomito. So paramita is wisdom, but not just normal wisdom, a wisdom of full view of the entire existence of all kinds, the full understanding of universe of and yourself, right? You in relation to your universe and the universe around you, which means other people, other things, other earth, stuff like that. Those is because you get to the source and understand. It's simple. So when you, nothing happened to you, you don't think of anything. You don't harbor any thoughts. 
good or bad, you're at peace. When things happen, people ask you questions, throw some sort of reaction or action to you, output. You can see it very clearly where it comes from. You can see immediately what, where it affects you. You won't see I being offended. You will see, oh, it touches my heart. It touches my head. It touches my anger. It touches my sadness. It touches my happiness. I have emotions, but emotions reacting to it. You're able to see that level while still playing that puppet, I mean, that goal. You're still doing this machine things of things, but you, you're no longer bound by it. Right? You're not a machine, but you are beyond that. You're not absence of it. You're beyond it. That means you, uh, you have all this equipment, emotions, sensors and stuff, but you are not bound by this sensory. You're able to see it clearly, like you see TV. Oh, he's crying. Oh, he's crying. I feel sad. And after that, I realize it's a, it's a show. It still be sincere, but you're not there. So it's hard. You cannot put words into this level. But something I share because it's something is, it's it's, it's a very free, liberating life. You're no longer bound by the fear of death, bound by the fear of, you know, wants. You know, I need this. I like desire this. I lust for her or him, or I want this. I want to get that. I I want to achieve this and that. But. As of now, we are not there. We still need to do what we need to do, pursue what we want to pursue. All we can do now is understand there is a state like this and we can attain it right now in a common people level within one lifetime because those things, those levels take thousands of lifetimes to achieve. And we already have thousands of lifetimes behind us. Right now, we will have thousands in front of us. Whether we want to make it a nice shortcut or not, you also need to put effort. It's, there's no shortcut. The best shortcut is to put in the real effort into it. All we can help is this kind of condition, Amito, for give you a quick, better way of using your effort. You can put a lot of hard effort into attaining a little higher level of meditation. But if you have Buddha's help, they will help you. Same level of sincerity, same level of grindiness, same level of want to get out of six dreams, but you apply it with the help of Buddha and you get out easily. However, there still have to there's still a long journey from here to there. You still need to work on it. It's you can't escape re effort, no matter what you do. You know, genuine effort, genuine want to uh, to, to be uh liberated from your condition and understand that you are your ma you are the creator of your own becoming and unbecoming you are making yourself who you are, really are whether you're aware or not conscious unconscious subconscious all right and understand you and others relationship is helping you as well making you come to terms with you know you don't have to be too attached to yourself in a way that you thought you are you are not always this person all right understand this teaching will help you you know being able to compassion because they are also part of me whether i'm aware of it or not uh, i will work on that but i do know that you know what they seek i somehow seek as well i seek peace and solace i seek happiness it's just whether I define happiness as having 10,000 Lamborghini cars under my basement or happiness as in no one trying to find trouble with me or I'm at peace. I'm, 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 I'm giving rise to sadistic thoughts or trying to take what not's ours. I'm able to fully aware and in tune with my thoughts, action and deeds. That sort of happiness. It varies according to different levels of understanding, different levels of exposure. You're exposed to this kind of teaching, maybe your happiness definition will change. Your goalposts will move a little bit higher. It will not be stuck with material. Right? It's always important to have material and stuff. Those wealth is a is a result, is a input, is up, um, is a bounce back reaction. It's reacting to whatever you put out there, right? We should not think about what we receive. 
we should think about what we give and focus on what we give. Right? There's a saying, you only think about what you input into this piece of land. Agriculturally speaking, you know, planting, what you put in here, how much effort you have put. Are you using the right technique? Do you understand the composition of soil? How much acidity in there? You need to worry about this. Very detailed. Understand what's important is you have right seeds, right condition, and then put in the effort to fine tune it. Understand how much composition of soil you need to have. Water, acidity, composition, pH, water. Don't think about oh, how big the, the fruit's going to be, pumpkin patch or something. You already did your study on that. You understand that, okay, I need to do this in order to get there. Sing, yuan, suming, for the pure land practitioners. Faith, vow, and incessantly chanting, reciting Amitabha. Those three, faith, vow, chanting. Faith, vow, chanting. Those are three recipes. How fine-tuned you are depends on how high you get. But you need to have faith and vow. You want to be a Buddha, number one, because you are a Buddha. By like a kaleidoscope, your nature is one. But you're already being twisted, perverted into thousands, thousands, thousands of variation. Hence, you're very far removed, even though you have that. So you can't, by your own effort, suddenly able to achieve that source. There's two paths before you. You either go on your own way, work on whatever you have learned this life in Buddhist teaching. Just because you hear all of the Buddhist teaching doesn't mean you're able to do all of it. You need to let it sink in, absorb, slowly digest and do it. Or the other path, which if you're still aware, there is Amitabha, who has 48 vows, who does not tell you to deviate from the teaching because he is Buddha. He's talking the same thing as Shaimuna, Shaimuni Buddha did. Go up there, you'll be listening exactly the same thing. But problem is, he will enhance your ability to receive. And that enhancement cannot come without you wanting to receive that teaching. That means you need to build up your muscle as well. There's no way you can avoid building up your muscle. It's just giving you a better technique and tools rather than you trying to go on YouTube and find out how to best build your muscle. He is a very skilled muscle builder. He tell you how do you build muscle. You eat this, you eat that. Just follow me, you will get that. That's what Buddha's function is. Teach you, instruct you. What your function is to be ready to receive. If you can't receive, he can give you thousands of tips, thousands of conveniences. You cannot get any benefit because you don't even put one drop of effort in it. Don't blame him. Never. You can't. They, he has done nothing wrong by us. He has done everything right by us. 48 vows is there. All right? The most easiest army for is there. The proof is there. For many generations of aunties and uncles, those elderly especially, who are very sincere and very, um, let's say, pure at heart, they no longer have all these thoughts. They focus on Amitabha. They attain auspicious passing. That means they pass without thinking about, oh, my son, my children, but, but still maintain the real relationship with them. Talk to them, have laugh with them, have food with them. But when it times up, she just sit on the bed, sitting on the lotus position and say goodbye. Or, you know, clean up everything, sit there and bye-bye. Or in the middle of talking about things and then say, I got to go, bye. Very casual, but dignified. See, they're all proofs, they're all records. You can say five, six of them are fabricated. Thousands of them are not fabricated. You can't. It's not scientific to deny that. There's three years, as most of them as well. A lot of them are three years after they contact the Buddhism. They, they always chant Amitabha for every day. And most of them, three years, go to Pure Land. Same thing. It takes three years to finish the effort. Three years compared to a lifetime, it's it's a huge gap, right? Why we can't do that? Because we are not putting in the effort, because we are not in tune with his teaching. We are always trying to do this and that. For my example, myself, exactly. I'm still here, stuck. Exactly the same reason. Wandering thoughts, jumping this, jumping that. And I'm going to continue like this until I'm ready. So this is a battle between yourself your conscious self and your, how to say, your desires. So you just have to, have to grind through this. So I, I'm, I'm expanding a lot f away from this, but I'm um, going back to the clause, right? 
work on yourself and and um, have good friends, good um, social circles. Understand, you know, uh, who will understand you, who have the same goal with you. If not, Chan Ami Tofu by yourself, you will eventually get there. Right? You need to. We all need to improve from pursuing toys to pursuing expensive toys to pursuing ex- uh, luxurious travel and to pursuing better career and then enhance into pursuing uh, you know more spiritual stuff you know you are stable on your material needs now you need to go beyond material needs you cannot just stuck in eat good sleep good uh, drink good uh, wear good uh, wear good stuff or appear good look good those are not enough you know you need to go beyond you need to do good you need to give good all right if you're advanced you don't even need to go through all that you just go straight into i want to contribute good to other people eventually you will receive good things on yourself um understand that no one would do this kind of false title sell this there's no need they, they, they know the roots of all fame and fortunes is your own merits Right, good fortune, Fu Bao. Right? Merits. Meritorious means you have a merits of receiving this title entitlement. Right? You have done, say, in bank ten years service, you get entitlement, better leave. In karmic terms, same. You have the merits of doing these good deeds earnestly. You don't ask for anything in return. You will receive exactly what you don't ask for in return. You know, the good stuff. If you yearn for good children, you will have good children be born into your family. They will continue your bloodline. They will make your family better, physically and mentally. You know, that's not give you a lot of headaches. The child that does not give you headaches. That is a very hard ask. If you don't have that sort of merits, you will not attract that sort of people in your house. Same, you know, um, you you just do your job. You're just trying to trying to contribute as much as you can outside of your daily livelihood. If you can do more, if you can't, always have that thought ready to go. And even your mind might not cooperate with you at the moment. When the condition comes in front of you, you have to get take it. You have to how to say you have to allow yourself to be malleable, like. If I can contribute that much, I will contribute that much. However, give yourself also a right kind of break. I'm getting too detailed here, but what I'm saying is, based on my experience, between pushing and giving yourself a break, you need to have the nice balance. Otherwise, you will break. And sometimes overdone it, you will regress a lot. You will just shut down and not doing anything. So action is always coming out from intention however there's a lot in your mind you can't have a pure intention unfortunately straight away because it's habit so what you need to do right now is to take what you can in your current life in your current condition and trying to inside and outside trying to cooperate external factor in your internal mental state you have to cooperate you have to have that sort of bottom line no matter what happened, no matter what my mood and my thought is, I will try to get this action see through. I will try to get this through. And once you do that, and if you have that fortune, uh, how to say, if you have that impo- uh, uh, momentum and you're able to cash in on that momentum, then you will be able to put yourself in a upward um movement that means you're able to do more good and the purer you get as well because you do the homework at home as well as you like this you know you're sharing other people so this kind of thing um you need to keep your eye open and if there's an opportunity take it and um but most importantly do not do not allow yourself to sink in and say oh i did this i did that i'm good do encourage yourself and appreciate any sort of encouragement, but do not be um, indulging in it. You know, um, understand what really matters. Right? right now, we have a goal to Pure Land, and 
no matter how well your life current is, you know, you will come to an end in this bo mechanical body. So what you must do is able to um, do what you can and, you know, take a moderate break, moderate, I'm talking to myself, I'm not moderate, I'm extreme, um, and able to come back, back to the purest part, beyond these obligations, you know, talk this, talk that, those are all just action, those are helping you, but they're not the main thing, the main thing is, are you able to let all this go immediately when time comes, just Amit Hoffa. All these are just preparation work, just helping you to, you know, talk yourself into it, like what we did. Master Shin Kong, he has very um, smart, you know, outlook in the beginning. He understands he needs to put in a lot of effort to convince himself. It took him until 80 years of age to convince himself to chant Amitofo. His teacher has been starting to ask him, you should, you know, focus on Pure Land because it helps you in one lifetime. He was 30, early 30, mid 30. I forgot. He became a monk at 30, still under Master Lee, who is a lay Buddhist, but a very a chief person, enlightened, I would say. Took him until 85 years to fully receive Pure Land teaching. Fully, guys, fully. 100%, no doubt. Most of us, we might like, oh yeah, I encountered this early, I'm willing to chant Amito for early. We have good roots. But like I say, fully, 100%. If anything happened, you can drop all this family, this Dharma talk, whatever, everything drop, chant Amito for. That's how strong it has to be. He's willing, he's able to do that. That's how powerful we need to have that. This is what matters. The rest has to line up behind it. I'm not saying they're not important. Taking care of your parents, taking care of your family, taking care of your wife, your children, your husband. Those are good, important stuff. Taking care of this temple society. But those are second to Amitabha. Second. Because nothing of that matters when you pass away. Nothing of that will help. You can help them as well when they pass away. No matter how much your emotion wants to, loves to, likes to, no point. It's time, time is up, time is up. Obviously, while you have this condition, you do it properly, you will garner fortune, good fortune, good merits that will help you in your pursuit to pure land. That's why it's, Buddhism is always rounded. They're never sharp edge. There's no sharp edge in Buddhism. The only sharp edge you need to have in Buddhism is to yours, is a determination to really work towards cutting off those um, those incessant fun now, you know, incessant um, affliction in thoughts, in, in speech, it, affliction, yes. But this inflation, in, affliction is, if you put it that way, affliction, this like this one, statistic or anything, is also part of your true nature. It's just perverted. So, Technically speaking, you don't really cut it off. You just convert. You know, it's so it's an energy. You just need to like zhao xiang in Chinese, in a military term. You need to convince it to surrender, submit to the will of your true nature. Sound like that, you know? Submit to your will, not the other way around. Those may be bandits, you know, in a master in guang's term, you know, the old military terms. Those are bandits, you know, hiding in mountains, causing troubles, and you, your, your, your conscience, your, your, um, your body heart, is the general inside the camp, trying to create peace in that place. Your job should not prioritize on killing the bandits. Rather, should be neutralizing, able to. If you can reduce the killing, you should reduce the killing. See, it all in accordance to your true nature. Your job is to make sure it's peace and order. People's life are good as usual. That's what a good general should be. Ideal. Obviously, you have, might have to draw swords, draw blood, stuff like that. But if you can, try to zhaoxiang, try to convince them to submit to your will. And to convince people to submit to your will, no one likes to be controlled. No one likes to be following others. The only way one can do that successfully is they themselves able to control their own will and thoughts able to be a role model.
and never being an imposing figure other than their job requirement. If you're a leader of an army or organization, your job is to delegate, command, able to, not command, delegate the task and able to lead forward. Then you should. If you don't do that, you fail your job. Back in the point of cultivation, same thing. You know, the only way you can do that is to zhao xiang ta, is to actually straighten yourself out. And straighten yourself out, to be honest, may look counterintuitive. Why would I want to make concession? Why would I do this, do that? Why wouldn't I enjoy my own time and stuff like that? But you just, you just need to see through the action. You might not convince, but when you do it, and it makes sense to you, like, like the more you do it, it makes sense. And then eventually you find there's a point to this action. You know, that's why the, the Master Shin Kong is doing this. Like, why, that's why your predecessor is doing all this, you know. Um, he worked on himself until he's 85 years to fully believe in Pure Land. All right. He's giving us a show, a good show. It takes that long to get there. You know, so don't take this easy path easily. Don't treat it as impossible. That is not impossible. Everyone has that. But don't treat it as simple stuff. I can just do it in my last breath. Easy peasy. No. It's not easy. You have to put in your work. You have to break yourself a little bit. You have to push yourself. You have to break that mold. He broke it. Master Jin Kong used this as his way, talking Dharma as the way to convince breaking his mold, molding, shaping himself, you know, sculpting himself after the sutra. Sutra is basically means path, the way. The way to what? Buddha Sutra, the way to Buddhism, the way to become Buddha. You know, Bible, the way to Sung Jing in Chinese is the, the the sutra of if you use Bible in direct translation, the sutra of sagehood. Same thing. Alright? Uh Quran as well, the, the way to attain that. I don't know how to explain it, but it's the way, right? So so basically back to the, the point right here, these are against the way. They go against your thoughts. Hence it's a bit it's 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 easy to get yourself caught up in the whirlpool. So you need to get out of it. I think that's it. We finished these two sentences. Next week we'll finish the last two. And then we'll continue. Um, this is a long, there are 100 phrases, so no point rushing it. Um, the first two, these are the two sentences I have um, covered today. Um, you know, I talked so long, the whole summary of this um, is all about be honest to yourself, you know. Um, what appears to be um, unfathomable, like why would I give concession, anything? Give a bit of space, let it grow, uh, put in action, see if it works. You know, it, like when you used to be easily angry because of someone's rude remark, now you become more kind and more caring. You be more tuned to their needs. Like a person is rude because they do that. Um, in terms of what this quote is talking about, able to face your truth, your own truth. You face your own error you know able to look in yourself in directly honestly nakedly looking into yourself your own heart bare heart is very important in uh, making something out of it you know like what can i do with myself you know and and be honest you know no one's looking at you when you do that you by yourself don't add too much element no, don't add those thoughts into it. Yes, you need thoughts, but that thought needs to be using as an analyzer, not emotion, not um, impulse. You just need to look into yourself properly and observe yourself when you're actually dealing with others. How you instinctively act is the kind of default, like you, when you go to Windows, there's a default settings. That kind of default settings you wired yourself so far where you are so far, right? That's when you actually put the test. You understand, okay, this is how I act when this happens. And observe, just observe. You can't suddenly stop. 
you obviously if you can put a break on your extreme behavior, go ahead or just look into yourself and understand this is my default state. Something needs work. How do you know something needs work? Is this harming people? Is this helping people? Is this harming myself? Is it helping myself? Right? Is harboring these kind of mistakes helping myself? It's like saying that I have cancer, I don't um how to say, uh, I don't treat it. Mm. It's a better way to put that. I have issues and I don't, um, uh, how to say, sometimes you can't immediately solve it. You shouldn't, you shouldn't rush it, but you should always be there, ready to reduce that impact, ready to change it when the time is there. You, you can't consciously change it. It has to be unconscious. Consciously, you, need, you, you can lay out the work the groundwork, but you need to work together with your other half of yourself, slowly going there. You, know, you need to rewire yourself to get there. It's not straightforward. Say, Dylan, don't do this. You can't. Trust me. When 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 real things happen, you'll be default going to the same old path that caused trouble. So these are um, just one example of transgression caused because people used to do that, used to overly protect themselves, used to overly prioritizing themselves in terms of you know selfishness, uh, selfishness in terms of without care for others. Self-care is different from selfish, all right? Selfish is like you literally just you know, zero sum, like me or everyone else, that kind of mindset, you know? I'm just gonna step on other people, trample on other people in order to get what I want. That's not, that's selfish in this context self-care is like what i say understand your strength give yourself affirmation understand your weakness give yourself uh, give yourself a warning as well give yourself a alert being alert being careful that is your that's your that's where your impulse is strong and you, if you misuse it you might committing issues something sometimes you can't revert back you know those those relationships, those are fragile stuff, you know, those soft things, you know, hard physical stuff can be fixed in a way, but soft emotional stuff, those things needs hard work and care and sensitivity. Um, not saying that you shouldn't say your mind, but depends who you're dealing with. I'm talking, I'm, I'm jumping so many loop here. What I'm trying to say is just, just be, just be aware, you know, a proper person, I mean, a, a person who's, Dwell into the selfishness are very narrow. They are not benefiting themselves. In long run, they are only harming what they get, what they think they get. They end up with empty hand, and not just empty hand. Their hand get burned in the process. All right, and the people they harm on the way, either they hold grudge, which will become retribution in the future, or if they have virtues and merits, they don't worry about you doing that because they don't care. They have all the abilities to restart again. All you have is empty ashes burning on your hand. All right? That's no point. That's no benefit. Selfishness does not benefit yourself. Only when you're aware of yourself, know your weakness, know your strength, be moderate, understand what you need to work on, then you can improve. Then you can truly enhance yourself and people around you. That's how it actually works. You now, selfishness, ironically, does not benefit yourself. Self-care, right? I just need to use the right word because there's a lot of mixed up concept. I'm just gonna, for this context of this talk, you need to self-care. You need to um, drive yourself, understand the nuances, subtlety you know, of your mind. It's not straightforward like that. You can't just say, uh, 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 you can just you can hammer yourself but it can only last for three days three months at most and then we will go back nothing wrong with that you should you should try somehow push yourself outside but it will bounce back like a rubber band because right? there's there's a there's a shape that you already held like this when you were born before you were born and stuff now you need to change the course um depends on how sharp you are. Sometimes you, you might already have the strong foundation in the past life. You, now you're here, you're just trying to get this through. You're able to change immediately. But most people, they take time to change that composition, the structure, so that they can walk longer 
on the path they want. You want to walk longer on the path you want. You want to stay on this path of Buddha long. You don't want to just suddenly after a speech you feel all powerful and all inspired, enlightened, and then only to end up going back to where you were, which is what probably would happen. Nothing wrong with that. That's how cultivation is. You will go back to where you were, you will understand, and then you will start again. More skillful, yes. There's a lot of word they use in Buddhism, especially Theravada. They, I love the word skillfulness. That just your kung fu. Chinese is kung fu. Kung fu. What is kung fu? Right. In this term, cultivation kung fu. The kung fu of cultivation is how skilled you are, how how sensitive you are to your own plus and minus, to your own trigger spot. What triggers you? What makes you spur forward? quickly what makes you um, if you ch chip it time it right you have put yourself in that right position you're able to go straight to pure land that's depending on how aware you are of yourself that means you need to give time all right to read the sutra and read the sutra not just read the sutra you read the sutra because you want to read yourself uh, sutra is a mirror I have not been reading Sutra for years now. One year, I think. I, I have to admit. I haven't looked into myself for a year, in a sense. So think of a lawn, if you have a lawn, right? Or a, a public park. Think of that place if no one's looking after it for a year. It's all grass. It's all snakes. A lot of things hiding in there. It's messy. So you need to clean your own grass. Clean your own path. That's only you who can do it. Buddha can give you the best lawn mover, but it's not going to be useful when you never use the lawn mover. He can give you the 2023 edition. That's what Buddha can give you. They can. They give you the tools and stuff. If you don't use it right, you ask Buddha, he will help you. You can ask the San Zhi Si as well. They will help you. They will give you the tools. They give you the right condition. The problem is you need to clean it. You just need to activate that lawn mover and clean the grass in your heart. Make it clean, make it ready when time comes. Remember, Buddhism is also about opportunity as well. Condition, we use a different word. Cause, condition, effect. If condition comes, you didn't able to detect it earlier on time and you lose it, I don't know when's the next time. So as far as my concern right now is pure, right now is our condition. In the more fine way, day to day, Maybe you encounter this good uh, teacher that, you know, this one moment that can help you plant the seed, strengthen the seeds, the, the, the seeds of thoughts, seeds of enlightenment. Maybe because of that, you were able to start to be more reflective of yourself. Your behavior will start to wire towards it, not against enlightenment, towards enlightenment. And that, that is crucial. Timing is crucial in that. You need to know when. But how do you know when? You never know when. It will happen. It will happen. The problem is, are you able to detect when it happened? Are you able to spot when it happened? When it happened to you, it's not directly say, oh, here's the road to enlightenment. Have a signboard. Let's go. It's every day, day to day, normal. Suddenly it comes out. Oh, that's something, someone, some place, some event. And then whether you take it in the in the direction of enlightenment or against enlightenment, it has to depend on your ability. You know, you need to be prepared. If your whole heart, that's the saying, say, if your mind is full of grass, zhang chao, tou nao zhang chao. in other words, not stupid, but um, your, your mind is muddy. You can't see it. How can you drive yourself towards the enlightenment? You can't. You still blur. You still muddy. If you clean yourself every day, ready, when times come, when condition arise, when situation happens, you're able to use it. And you're able to put yourself in the best optimal position and you go. Your action, your deeds, your speech will be exactly on, to, on point. Right? None of them is either. None of them is manipulative. No, you don't manipulate. Like Buddhism, do not talk about manipulation. That is... That is stuck in the mind. Buddhism is beyond that, beyond the five skanda, 
射手相形式 ，alright? I'm throwing a lot of terms that makes no sense, but trust me, there's a reason why Buddha Bodhisattva say that the five skanda is also the five trappings we have, the mode, like I say, the default sets, alright? Se, which is our body, physical, you know, lust and all that. Those are food, lust, uh, pleasure, sound, pleasure, taste, pleasure, touch, pleasure, sight, you know, pleasure, thoughts. Those are physical. And then your emotions, everything you feel, uh, you want. Also, another trappings, the five trappings, five conditions bound you. All right? If you're able to liberate yourself from these five traps, in a way, then you will get close to Prajna Paramina, which is the enlightenment, which is the state of enlightenment. All right, back to the point. Okay, so just just ready yourself. Yeah, um, not manipulative. This is not a manipulation. This is just you tune yourself, instinctive, very sharp. 一个一个真真物的人很 sharp. They are very sharp. Now, they might look blunt. They might not look reactive or anything because they're at peace. They might look like they have no reaction, no emotions, or sometimes they don't even uh, look like they are. Uh, you know, like great wis- people with great wisdom looks like a fool in a way. Dazuroyu, uh, they look like a a hole in Japanese, like an uh, yu, yu, yufu, yufu. They look like a foolish foolish person or look like a person they are not so not the sharpest two in the shed. It's like in salt, right? But no, when time comes, they are sharp. They tune it quickly. Their flexibility is astonishing. Normal people will be like stuck in this mode of thinking. They'll be like, no, no, no. Either they lost the opportunity or they do something against their true nature, which means they're committing transgression, which is what I'm showing in this share screen right now. So all this will come in. You have the check. You were able to check in all this one day. Yeah, I think I have uh, gone over time. So one hour and forty three minutes. Well, minus the time we're fixing it. So I hope that's enough for today. Um, thank you. And the end, let's do this. May the merits and virtues adorn the Buddha's pure land. Repay the four kinds of kindness above and relieve the sufferings of those in the three paths below. May those who see and hear of this all bring forth the heart of understanding and compassion and leave the teaching for the rest of this life. Then be born together in the land of ultimate bliss. Amitofo. Let's chant in the Amitofo. 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 Amitofo.